A little over 20 years ago, Lexus introduced to America the very first GX back in 2003. Now at the time, the GX 470 was essentially known as kind of like a guzzied up version of the Toyota Foreigner. The Foreigner, of course, as you guys know, is also built off of a Land Cruiser Prado, a nameplate that we don't see here in America. Now over the years, the GX has grown a pretty big following for its strong off-road capability, coupled of course with the reputation for reliability and durability that Lexus is known for. And Lexus Lexus, of course, followed it up with a second generation, which ran from 2009 all the way up to 2023. Well, I'm pretty happy to say that we are finally getting an all new version of the GX for 2024. And as you can see this week, we are actually out here in the land of cactuses or cacti to finally drive the all new third generation GX. It's now known as a GX 550. And this particular one here that I'm showing you is the top of the line model known as the GX 550 Luxury Plus. So for those of you who have always wanted the off-road capability of a Land Rover, but you didn't want to quite deal with the spotty reliability, how does the brand new 2024 Lexus GX 550 stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the upgraded styling for the all new GX, and what I mean upgraded, this vehicle is all new. It's built on a new frame. It's also got a new powertrain. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys this new engine. Now, for those of you who really loved the V8 engine that you found in the previous two generations, I'm sad to report that the V8 is gone. It's been replaced, of course, by this new twin turbocharged 3.4 liter V6. Now, if you guys have spent some time in the new Toyota Tundra or a Lexus LX600, you should be pretty familiar with this engine. It's known as the V35 a. That's the internal engine designation. It's a 3.4 liter twin turbocharged gasoline and port di uh, direct injection uh, V6. So it has two turbochargers. I don't know the max boost pressure. Um, however, I've seen the Tundra's max boost pressure at around 18 PSI. I suspect this model has a little bit less because it has a little bit less horsepower versus this same output in the Tundra and in the Lexus LX600. This car or this application, this engine makes 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. That's an increase of around 48 horsepower versus the old 4.6 liter V8 and about 150 more pound-feet of torque. That torque is going to be uh, achieved at a much lower RPM, of course, uh, because of the twin turbocharging. It all goes out through a 10-speed automatic transmission. That's an upgrade of four gears versus the prior generation 460. Uh, and fuel economy has also improved to 15 in the city, 21 on the highway, 17 combined. You have around a 21 gallon fuel tank. This engine requires premium. So you're looking at around 350 miles of range on a full tank. Now, if that fuel economy isn't great to you because it's really only a one or two MPG improvement over the old V8, uh, Lexus has confirmed that a hybrid model is coming. That hybrid is already known in China as the GX 550H, which has the uh, hybrid max or iForce max powertrain from the Toyota Tacoma, which pairs a 2.4 liter turbo with an electric motor between the 10-speed auto. Lexus says the hybrid is coming to America, but they won't tell us when and which engine it's going to have. So I suspect it'll be that same four-cylinder because the LX will also get a hybrid version, which will have the twin-turbo V6 from the Tundra. Now, Lexus claims this model should get to 60 in around 6.5 seconds. We've got our testing equipment. We'll see what we can get here at 3,000 feet above sea level. That's about a second improvement versus the old GX 460. It has a top speed of around 109 miles an hour, and the GX has been upgraded in terms of towing. The uh, premium and overtrail models will tow up to 8,000 pounds. This model here with the captain's ears, however, will tow just under or just over 6,900 pounds as this car sits. It is heavier even though the new GAF architecture, body and frame architecture is lighter, this, car, this vehicle as it sits weighs in at just over 5,700 pounds. That's around a five to 600 pound increase versus the prior generation. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and talk about the exterior styling of the all new GX. Now, as you guys know, Lexus has been completely redesigning almost all their models. And this version or this GX is essentially one of the oldest vehicles out there, but now it's finally been given the redesign that it deserves. And you can see the design of this vehicle is instantly recognizable as a GX in my eyes. And on this luxury plus trim, there's also a premium and a premium plus and an overtrail model. I have a separate video of the overtrail for those of you who want to see that. You can see the design for me just really works. I love the new interpretation of the Lexus spindle grille. It's actually a little bit smaller versus the old GX. I love the kind of matte black finish to it. The grill, Lexus says, they've kind of moved the actual cooling elements of the grill upward. Down here, you can see 
it's got more of like protective uh, design stuff to where if you guys plan, plan to take this off-roading, um, the overtrail models will kind of have almost like a brush guard type finish where you can remove that piece over here. On the luxury, you can't do that, but a lot of the cooling elements have been moved a little bit up. They've also been placed into a kind of a safer zone. Uh, this here houses the radar system for the Lexus Safety System 3.0. You have a front camera system. You'll get the panoramic view camera as standard on the Premium Plus and up trims. And then all GX models will come standard with the Premium Triple Beam Full LED Headlights, which include the LED daytime running light, LED turn signal. You also get LED fog lights and LED corning, cornering lights. You'll get those fog lights on the Premium Plus trims and up. And then as you can see underneath here, the luxury trim does not include skid plates. You have to go for the overtrail trim to get the skid plates. You do have these well-integrated parking sensors. And then this, in this imminent white pearl exterior, which is 500 bucks extra, I really love the way this truck looks with the black accents, of course. It just looks modern, it looks handsome, it looks rugged, it looks masculine, but it also looks a lot more chunky and you know tough versus the previous generation. Now moving around the side profile, you can see this is built on the same platform as the LX600 and the Tundra, so it's a ladder type frame. It's the only body on frame vehicle in its segment, that Lex that's what Lexus says, and the company has also made this vehicle larger versus the prior generation. It's five inches longer overall at 197.1 inches long. It has a 112.2 inch long wheelbase, so the wheelbase is now 2.4 inches long, Longer. It shares that wheelbase with the all new uh, LX600 as well. Um, this vehicle is also about two inches wider and two inches taller. So it really gives you that more imposing stance. Lexus also said that they pulled uh, this like pillar here, this A pillar back about 2.4 inches to give it a more upright appearance. That's gonna again, give it more of a truck-like look. The wheel arch trim you can see is painted on the premium and luxury trims. It'll be uh, unpainted in a gray finish on the over trails. And then you can see the luxury trim comes with these really intricate set of 22 inch wheels riding on a 265 by 50 R22. The premium will have have a 20 inch wheel uh, with a different design depending on if you go for the plus or the non plus trim. You have 13.9 inch brake rotors clamped down by four piston calipers. You have a 13.2 inch rotor at the back. This vehicle has an independent front suspension with adaptive dampers. So the adaptive dampers come on the over trail or this luxury plus trim. The rear is a solid axle. Lexus has done away with the available rear air suspension that you used to get on the previous generation. Now down here you can see uh, this area here is kind of glossy black gray painted. You have body colored side mirrors with kind of have like a squared off look. It reminds me a lot of like a Toyota Land Cruiser for example. You have integrated turn signals, you have a, four, a 360 camera, and then the Luxury Plus trim is the only trim to give you the panoramic glass roof. Now that, that roof doesn't actually open up to vent air, but it does have a feature on it where you can frost and defrost it by pushing a a button, you can see the roof rails are the low profile slim ones, which are black finish. I also like the fact that Lexus didn't put a lot of chrome on this vehicle. It really has more just black accents to it. And you can see from the side profile, I love the boxy upright proportions of this vehicle. It just gives it a much more you know tough truck look, which kind of matches the body on frame capability that you get with the uh, GX in general. Looking at the back, you can see it's got all the newer Lexus design cues. It's just a huge improvement. This vehicle clearly looks like it's jumped like two generations based or compared to the previous generation, which was long overdue for a redesign. You can see you have the full LED light blade taillights back here with the Lexus uh, spelled out at the back. There's GX 550 badging. You can also get a dealer accessory where you can black out the, ax the badging back here if you'd prefer that versus the chrome. You can see you have an LED turn signal LED taillights and reverse lights. Lexus actually says they move the taillights a little bit higher so it's got, it has better visibility if you're driving this vehicle off-roading. Down here you can see uh, there's an exhaust system that's kind of hidden underneath there. There's also a, looks like a full-size spare tire, although I don't believe it is a matching alloy. Uh, the Overtrail also has the same thing with a full-size spare. Uh, over here you can see you've got this nice rear spoiler with a digital camera rearview rear mirror. You have a windshield wiper back here, although the old GX I feel like used to hide it underneath the spoiler, so I'm kind of sad that they don't do that for the new generation. Uh, I love the fact that Lexus decided to keep the separate opening rear glass. You can see the third row is standard on this model. This is a really good Great feature where you can access the cargo area without opening up the whole trunk. And then for those of you who also hated the old barn yards or barn door with the side swing out, Lexus has done away with that. Instead, all models come with a power lift gate. The upper trims will include a foot activated feature, so it's got a hands free function. This definitely is a much needed upgrade for the GX, and you can see. Um, with a third row seat up, there really isn't much space back here. Lexus says that you have around 10.3 cubic feet of space with a third row seat up. You can see it barely fits my backpack back here. So this is a pretty uh, useless space. It actually has around a cubic foot less versus the prior generation when you had the third row seat up. Now, thankfully, if you want, 
The upper trims will include a power folding feature for the third row. So you have to actually push and hold these two buttons here that will electrically fold down the third row. I imagine most owners are probably gonna do this because again, you can't use the, the cargo area without this folded down. When you fold down that third row, it expands the cargo to a little over 40 cubic feet, like 40.6. That's actually a reduction of around six cubic feet versus the prior generation, which is confusing to see. However, if you fold down the captain's chairs, um, that will expand the cargo to just under 77 cubic feet of space. That is an increase of around 12 cubic feet in maximum cargo capacity versus the old GX, so that definitely is a big improvement there. Uh, underneath the floor here, you can see there is a small space where you have the jack and the tools. You have a little bit of under full storage here. But again, if you guys want more cargo space, check out the Overtrail models, which I have a separate video on because that has uh, even more space because the third row isn't taking up that room. So now let's go ahead and move on to the interior of this all new Lexus GX550 Luxury Plus. Before we get inside, however, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current intelligent access key that is standard on every GX. It's the current Lexus fob. It's a nice looking key. It looks different versus other Toyota models, although I was kind of hoping Lexus will eventually introduce a new key. Uh, you can see it has usual buttons for lock, unlock, power lift gate, and panic function. It also has a remote start function. If you push the lock button three times and then hold it on the third time, it'll remote start the vehicle. This car also also has the digital key function, which is an extra option for 600 bucks, where you can use your phone as a key if you have access to the Lexus uh, inf interface uh, infotainment system. Now, uh, coming up to the door handle, you can see there's a little, you know, ridge line area here, ridge area here, where if you touch that, that will lock the door for you. The mirrors will also electrically fold. This vehicle does not have a an auto walk away lock or unlock feature. I was kind of hoping that Lexus and Toyota would eventually introduce that. But if you touch the back of the door handle, that will unlock the door for you. Now, as you can also see, this vehicle does not use the digital latch door handle system like on the RX or NX. So it has a traditional pull style uh, actuated you know, system to open up the door, which again, some of you may prefer that. Now, being that this is the luxury trim, you also get a unique interior in terms of the seats. Now, these seats are covered in a perforated semi-aniline leather. So this is a real leather material. It's not the pleather or the new luxe material that you find in the premium and the overtrail trims. These seats, like I said, heated and ventilated and they are massaging. The massage function is standard on the luxury trim. The seats adjust in uh, 10 different ways is what Lexus says, but to me it's more like 14 different ways because you also get a thigh extender. Uh, you also get uh, a three person memory on the driver's side, which is nice. And then in terms of the door panel materials, you can see uh, Lexus has been kind of doing away with doing wood and more leather stitching on the upper portion, but this is a soft touch injection molded plastic, which is nice. You have the same saddle brown uh, accentuated on the door panel as well. You have some black ash wood trim, aluminum accented door handles, padded area here where your elbows would rest with beautiful stitching. And then my tester also has the Mark Levinson 21 speaker audio system. That's, extra, that's an extra 1100 bucks on lower trims. Down here, you can see it's hard touch plastic, but you have some nice door storage, which is nice. But overall, you can see it makes a great first impression. And as you guys also saw, the running boards, are, they auto retract open or closed. And you can also adjust that setting via a little button over there on the dash. So this is definitely nice to help short people like myself get in. That is included if you guys go for the luxury trims as I get in and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Now Lexus does not offer a soft close feature. That's something that I think you can get on the LX on the ultra, ultra luxury trim, but getting inside the vehicle and starting it up, Lexus puts the button here high on the dash. And then when I turn the vehicle on, you can hear it has that smooth starter noise of a V6. Now this is not a hybrid or a mild hybrid. A hybrid is coming later on, so it has a traditional starter noise. Uh, but if you guys have spent some time in other Lexus products, this interior is gonna feel pretty familiar. Uh, and it's a huge upgrade versus the old GX. Now the engine itself, It has a good V6 snarl. We'll uh, get this out on the road and uh, talk about how it drives later on. But you can see in terms of the rest of the dash, you have a soft touch injection molded plastic that's kind of carried over throughout the rest of the dash. No leather stitching, which would have been nice, but at least this feels pretty high quality. That heads up display is an extra 900 bucks. It's actually not standard on the Luxury Plus. It should be. Uh, this model also comes standard with a power tilt telescoping wheel, uh, which is nice. You get the 3.0 version of the Lexus safety system uh, driver assist technology. So this vehicle also has a camera that watches your face. You have paddles on the wheel. You have controls here to adjust the digital controls or the digital gauge display, which all of them come with this 12.3 inch cluster. Uh, and if you want to adjust the heads up display, it's adjusted via uh, the screen. It doesn't have those touch sensitive controls that we see on the new RX or the new NX. The horn 
It sounds appropriate given the size of this vehicle, but it's also a little bit nondescript. And then all GX models also come standard with a 12 or 14 inch Lexus interface touchscreen. So you can see my phone is connected via the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can also expand it out to take up the entire screen where it gets rid of the you know little you know display over there to the side. This gauge display is also slightly customizable. If I start selecting the drive modes, you can also you know show six different or seven different drive modes. I'm sorry, it's really intricate. Sport Plus, of course, we'll try that out when we're out in the um, actual road. There's also a normal comfort and eco. I love the graphic that it shows, and you can also kind of customize the way the dial looks, show what information you want. You can also put a map in the display if you'd like. It's not quite as impressive looking as what you're going to find in Audi's virtual cockpit. You can see there's the map in there, uh, along with a you know traditional looking single dial for the tack, along with your turbo boost gauge. You can also put off-road information there, so that's all very nice. Now down here you can see you have your dual zone or tri-zone temperature control. You also have a separate climate for the rear. You have an actual volume knob, knobs there for your um, climate adjustment, temperature adjustment, you have traditional vents, of course, and then down here you can see you have more of that black ash wood. Your drive mode selector is here. You can also uh, switch the, uh, put the transmission to like a, a ECT power. Or I guess it starts it out in second gear, which is kind of interesting. That's kind of a page taken away from older Lexus products. Uh, two USB-C charging ports there. You have a 12 volt power outlet. Uh, which is kind of cleverly hidden behind this door. This controls the 10-speed auto. It includes a manual mode here. If I put the vehicle into reverse, there's your full top-down 360 camera, which includes a washer. The graphic and resolution looks fine. It doesn't have that full 360 perimeter scan that I would prefer that I've seen in other vehicles, of course. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, over here to the side, you can see there's your controls for your power lift gate. You can also uh, uh, turn on and off the AC120 power outlet. You can also use the dimmer control switch. Over here, you can see there's a door that reveals the two square cup holders, which is nice. Your four-wheel drive system here is a switch. It's always in four-wheel drive high. You can also go to four-wheel low, and there's the Torsen limited slip center diff with a locking center diff, but no locking rear diff. That's on the Overtrail model. Wireless phone charging pad is here, nice padded center console. My tester also has the cool box for an extra 150 bucks. You can see there are four drinks in there. It's it stays pretty cold. That's a great option if you guys plan to take road trips and you want to keep your drinks nice and cold. Uh, the seats, like I said earlier, are very comfortable, plush and supportive. This definitely feels even softer versus the uh, new Lux fake leather that I also sat in earlier today. Um, the heat and ventilation is actually standard, but the massage is included on this trim. If you want to go to the massage, you have to go to the Lexus native system, go to seat controls and then uh, hit massage and then hit the seat there. So you basically turn it on from there. There are four different intensities. There's five different types of massage. My favorite is the first one, centripetal, uh, which actually works really nicely. You can't even get that on the LX, which is uh, surprising. You can see here, there's a digital camera review mirror. There's a glove compartment there, which is going into the dash. It's deep, it's damped, but not only when felt. You have a nice little storage compartment here. Um, above me, you can see this is the only trim to get that panoramic glass roof, which also offers a frost and a defrost function in addition to a power retractable shade. This sadly does not open to vent air, but if you guys want to paint a roof, you have to go for this trim here. It also gives you some LED map lighting as well, along with the thematic ambient lighting. But overall, you can see the interior is a wonderful place to spend time. It has some nicer features versus even the LX. And for those of you who think that it feels like a Toyota you know, Land Cruiser, I have, I'm happy to report that this definitely has that Lexus luxury feel with impeccable build quality, even though these models here are very early pre-production prototypes. Now hopping into the back seat of this GX550 Luxury Plus, I wanna show you guys, of course, the second and the third row because these are the three rows of seating come standard on the premium and the luxury trims. You can see my test car for an extra 450 bucks has these captain's chairs, which these captain's chairs uh, obviously reduce the seating capacity to six versus seven. Uh, they're also heated, they're manually adjustable. I personally would probably skip this and just go with the bench myself uh, just because I want to have the extra seating capacity. But Lexus says you have around 36.7 inches of legroom back here. That legroom figure is, is good, but it's not wonderful. If you guys are looking at the Lexus TX, you get around four more inches of legroom in the second row. This has about the same space as the even bigger Lexus LX600. So again, the body on frame construction does limit the actual space, but you do get around two more inches of legroom here versus the old GX460. Back here on the door panels, you can see it has the same soft touch injection molded plastic. You have these manual retractable sunshades, leather stitching over here with more of the wood and the brown accents. The Mark Levinson stereo has 21 speakers and it sounds fantastic. If you guys are an audiophile, the window controls are one touch for all four. They have a high quality tactile feel typical uh, build quality you know, stuff for Lexus here. Now getting back here, you can see that power retractable running board is nice. There's also a nice little grab handle here to help short drivers like myself get in. And then once I'm back here, you can see 
Let me go ahead and shut the door. This is where I'd have the seat to drive. You can see in terms of the space, it's fine. I will say that the raised floor is kind of making my knees be up a little bit higher than I'm used to in a car-based SUV. But I also like how the fact that the window is nice and low, so you have this nice view out of the actual window itself. Um, the space over here, you can see there's good foot space. I can cross my legs back here, but it's a little bit on the tight side. So again, if you want more uh, second row space, be sure to check out the Lexus TX. There's also your own set of rear seat climate controls back here. You can see there are heated rear seats, but no cooled seats. Lexus does not offer cooled seats in the second row of the GX, just heated seats. You do have two USB-C charging ports. There's a big hump here that you can see that takes up space. If you guys had the bench seat, you can see there are also some adjustable armrests here which is nice. You have some cup holder storage here uh, and the seat uh, also, you know, gives you the, the ability to kind of recline the seat if you want to recline it, which is nice. You know, it kind of gives you pretty good, good amount of headroom space as well. The panoramic glass roof gives you this nice commanding view, a little bit more light, but I wish this opened up to kind of give you, you know, ventilation for air. You have two storage cubbies over here, uh, which is nice, but sadly, Lexus does not give you the ability to slide the seat forward and back, which I'm actually really surprised that they don't give you that ability to slide the seat forward and back. So these are kind of just fixed and you have the recline position, which I imagine they do that because they want to preserve the space in the third row. So let's go ahead and get back into the third row and show you guys the space. Now, obviously you could go through that center pass-through. It's not the widest vehicle, even though they made it like two and a half inches wider uh, this year, but getting back here requires pulling this lever and it's a little bit, you have to kind of push that down. Uh, so it requires a little bit two hands, but you can see once you fold this down, the seat catapults forward. So if you have a child seat here, that's not gonna work where you uh, can slide the seat forward. You have to take the child seat out. But then getting into the third row here, you can see they're kind of like two jump seats. Lexus says you have around 31.8 inches of legroom back here. Now that legroom figure seems fine, but let's go ahead and get back here. So I'll go ahead and slide over to the side over here. I apologize, Lexus, for getting the floor mats in here kind of dirty, but you know what? Surprisingly, this legroom space is the same as what you're finding in the LX600. So even though this car is about three inches shorter, you do have decent amount of space back here. Now I will say that the floor is raised up because of the, the live axle and the body on frame. So my knees are kind of raised up a little higher than I would like, but you can see this is worth the seat in its fixed position. My knees aren't touching the back of the seat back so I can sit back here uh, for a short period of time. You can see there's also a power recline function for the third row because it's a power folding third row. In terms of the headroom space, if I sit back, these headrests are nice and tall uh, and my head is pretty close to the roof. So if you guys are over six feet, this is not gonna work for you in terms of you know, headroom space. There are some third row air vents back here. Uh, air vents for the second row are on the ceiling as well. You have LED lighting. There are USB charging ports along with hard touch plastic materials. You do have a nice view out of the window here because again, this is a nice box. There's cup holder storage. Same thing over here on this side. So overall, you know, I feel like this vehicle could be wide enough to have three across, but again, these jump seats back here aren't as horrible as I thought. And compared to the old GX, this has increased the third row seat legroom by about three inches. So now it is usable for average size adults, but mostly for kids. All right, so here we are finally driving the fully redesigned 2024 Lexus GX. This has been a long time coming because I've had my share of chances to drive the old second generation GX. And let me tell you, that car, while it was very nice when it first came out, didn't really age well over the years. The V8 engine just was a little bit sluggish, light on torque, the six-speed auto was dumbfounded most of the times, and the car itself just felt old. Now, of course, Lexus gave it some updates over the years, but we are starting off the drive here in this Luxury Plus trim, which is the pinnacle of the GX family. It now comes standard with a twin turbocharged V6, delivering 349 horsepower, about 60 less than the LX600. Uh, but it has the same torque at 479 pound feet. Pound feet. Full-time four-wheel drive is gonna be standard. We have this 10-speed auto with four more gears versus the old um, six-speed auto in the GX. So that's a big difference here, obviously, and it's gonna really improve the acceleration and the performance of this car. So I'm pretty excited to see what we can do zero to 60 wise in this vehicle. But let's go ahead and see what we can get here. When you brake torque it, it's in Sport Plus. All right, we got zero to 60 in 
eight seconds there. Now that time is a little bit slower versus what Lexus's claim of 6.5. We are driving this vehicle at uh, 30 or 3,000 feet above sea level, and I don't know why that has fallen off. That's the second time this has fallen off today. Apologize for that, guys. A few technical glitches here, uh, but I actually got a slightly faster time when I was driving the Overtrail trim. So I got 6.49 in the Overtrail. Not sure sure why this you know model is a little bit slower, but still that time is going to be plenty fast for most people. I think for the majority of customers, you're not going to be doing, you know, really quick zero to 60 times. So this should be plenty fast. But let's try it here one more time again, really quick and see what we can get. Because I want to see if I can get a slightly faster time. Remember, this car is uh, at sea level, so it's not going to be making the all of the power. It launches pretty nice. Sounds good also. It's kind of creating a fake sound through the uh, speakers, but there I have it going uphill at a 4% grade. We got 7.7 .7 there. So the first run at 6.8 is probably the number that you're, you're gonna wanna take. Uh, I'll be able to retest this vehicle at a later date when I get one back home. And that's when I hopefully should have uh, the vehicle, of course, do it even quicker time because it'll be at sea level. I've gotten this engine to do like in the under six second range in other vehicles that have a little bit more power, but also potentially way more. So that's something to keep in mind. This vehicle should have plenty of power. And for those of you who are coming from the old V8, you're gonna find plenty to like with this engine because it has a pretty meaty torque curve. Uh, it has that effortless feel that you kind of expect from a luxury type vehicle. Uh, it also makes a nice sound. The sound is enhanced, of course, in Sport Plus. Anytime I kind of just put my foot down, it has like this nice little intake howl, which is you know being created from uh, the engine or from the speakers in the Mark Levinson sound system. But again, it is a very nice sound that kind of reminds me a little bit of a V8. So those of you who you know like the sound of the V8, this V6 has a pretty nice noise to it. Uh, the ride quality I wanna talk about really quick because this model here has the Luxury Plus trim with the 22 inch wheels. Uh, it still has a live axle in the back, but we have these adaptive dampers. We have a double wishbone style front suspension with coil springs in the back. Uh, and I have to say, in a Sport Plus setting, the dampers are in its firmer, firmer setting. You definitely notice the ride feels a little bit bumpy. Uh, I feel a little bit of the vibrations coming through into the seats, into the steering wheel. And again, if you guys are used to driving a truck, this shouldn't feel out of character. It's gonna still have you know that tank-like feel. It feels like you can kind of roll over any obstacle. It, has, it gives you that nice commanding view of the road, which is fantastic. But let's go ahead and start fiddling with the drive mode selector here. I'll go into the normal setting. Now in the normal setting, the steering gets a little bit lighter. The engine sound is no longer being enhanced by the stereo system, so it's a little bit quieter still. And the dampers get a little bit softer. So in this mode, I'm noticing this is what most people are probably gonna drive it in. It's a little bit softer here. Now again, we're still sitting on a 50 series low, lower profile tire, so you're still feeling a little bit more of the bumps and imperfections coming into, into the road or coming in from the roadway. I'll switch it over into its comfort setting. This is going to be the softest setting. And you know what? I actually noticed a pretty d big difference here. In comfort setting, the car just kind of glides over the pavement very, very smoothly. Now we are on a little bit more of a smoother stretch of pavement here, but that jitteriness is gone. So I really like that. And if you guys are looking for an even more comfortable ride, I would probably say check out a premium model with its smaller 20 inch wheels. You're gonna have a little bit more sidewall protection. That's gonna give you the, probably the best ride quality, but if you guys are looking for an even softer ride quality, you know, a car-based SUV that doesn't have a live axle is probably gonna serve you better there. But you know what, for a vehicle that is body on frame with a live axle at the back, I think the GX's ride quality is so very, very plush. I mean, put my foot down here in comfort mode. This is with me just kind of moderately accelerating and the transmission is super smooth, very quick to shift. Uh, it just is really well matched to this engine, this twin turbo engine's powertrain. So uh, it kind of gives you that effortless feel. Zero to 60 times don't really matter with a vehicle like this, but I think for those of you who are coming from the, v the V8, you're just gonna notice that you don't have to push the engine quite as much. Even here at 3000 feet above sea level, uh, the vehicle has plenty of power. It has good visibility out of the front, out of the side. Out of the rear, the digital camera rear mirror is a nice touch, especially if you have their third row seat up with the headrest up, that will block your view. But without it, the view out of the back um, is good. It, it's even better with the you know, the digital camera rear view mirror. This car also has the Lexus Safety System 3.0 with their traffic jam assist. This is the first Lexus body on frame vehicle to have the optional traffic jam assist, which works fairly well. I've tried it in other Lexus products in stop and go traffic uh, and 
it's nice to see that the company is now including it on the body on frame GX. Really, this vehicle gets me excited to, of course, drive the new Land Cruiser, which is now the Series 250. It's built off of this same platform, but it has that hybrid powertrain. I'll be curious to see what the hybrid powertrain is like. And of course, the upcoming new generation 4Runner. Uh, we're expecting to see an all new 4Runner by the end of this year. We have no idea yet where Lexus is going to, or where Toyota is going to reposition that car now that we have a much more, you know, less expensive Land Cruiser. But the seats are also really comfortable and plush. I love the semi alien leather. I'm sitting here getting a massage. The massage function works just as well as any, you know, really expensive European model. Uh, it's also really quiet in here. There's very little road and wind noise and engine noise also is pretty muted unless you're really pushing the engine where it's kind of creating that nice induction howl, which makes it sound really good. It kind of makes it sound authoritative and nice. Uh, but overall, uh, I'll have to wait until I wait until I get one back home to retest the fuel efficiency. In my short driving with this vehicle where it's not even broken in, it's been averaging like 12 mpg. So uh, Lexus says 17 mpg on a full tank. This the trip computer was showing only 250 miles, which again, this car is not broken in yet. So I expect the fuel efficiency to improve. The hybrid should also improve that even further. But overall, if you guys are coming from the old GX, you're gonna really instantly notice how much more refined, how much quicker this car feels, how much more luxurious it feels. Um, but it really gets me excited again for the upcoming hybrid model because for those of you who want a luxury SUV but you want a body on frame design with the off-road capability and you know the ability to still drive this vehicle on the road without it punishing you, the new GX is basically very much up there at the top of its class. So with over 31,000 units sold in America in 2023, the Lexus GX is actually the third best-selling SUV in Lexus's North American lineup. So as you guys probably can uh, assume, this is a very important introduction for Lexus because really this vehicle is super unique in the fact that it's the only body on frame truck-based SUV that you're gonna find in the mid-size to larger premium luxury SUV space. As you guys saw after watching this video, the new GX has basically met or exceeded my expectations. I love the new V6 under the hood. For those of you who are thinking you're gonna miss the V8, you're not because Lexus really knows how to do a great engine. This engine is the same wonderful motor in the Tundra. It delivers zero to 60 in the mid six second range. It's very smooth, it's very linear. It has just a nice wallop of torque down low that gives it that effortless feel. The 10 speed auto also is a much better transmission that's very quick and snappy and smooth. Again, it's also a Lexus design transmission. The luxury model definitely has the slightly better ride quality, but I would probably expect for those of you who want the best riding GX, you're probably gonna wanna check out the premium version with the 20 inch wheels. This model, however, with the adaptive variable suspension does give you kind of that customization where you can go from a firmer ride up to a more softer ride. So again, that's going to be, you know, something that you can consider if you guys want a GX with all the bells and whistles. The interior has also been nicely updated, even though it may not look the most luxurious in photos when you're sitting in it, the seats are really plush. I love the semi aniline leather. The massage function works well. The front massaging seats you can't even get on an LX, which is just confusing to me because it's supposed to be a class above the GX. And in terms of the second row space, it certainly has room for adults. The third row is still kind of reserved for kids. The trunk also, most of you are gonna to wanna to keep the third row down if you actually need to plan to put stuff back there because there's no space behind the third row uh, because of the you know design of this vehicle. But overall, uh, as a daily driver, for those of you who are essentially considering like a Land Rover Defender or a G-Wagon, the GX for me kind of represents the perfect compromise between both vehicles. And you're also gonna get, get in a vehicle that is built in Japan, that's going to have that strong reputation for reliability and durability. That's what Lexus is known for. And even though these models that I'm driving here are very early built cars, they had no squeaks and rattles. They felt really extremely well made and it kind of just lived up or lived up to that Lexus reputation for uh, extremely good build quality. Now, if you guys are looking to get your hands on the new GX, like I said earlier, these are built in Japan and production will start in February of 2024. So basically this month, you should expect to see it in dealer showrooms probably a month or two after, depending on you know how long it's gonna take them to get to your area from Japan, of course. And pricing is gonna start at around 64,250. Now that actually represents a $4,000 price increase versus the previous generation GX460, which seems reasonable given, given the amount of luxury and technology this vehicle now has. If you guys want the premium plus trim, Lexus says that trim should account for about 30% of sales. That's gonna cost you around $5,000 more at just under 70 grand which used to be the starting price of the old luxury trim. Now, if you guys want the luxury or overtrail 
trail trims. I'll talk about primarily the luxury because I did a separate video on the overtrail. The luxury trim is going to start at around 77,250. So around seven grand more versus the premium plus. It's going to give you some you know, nice touches like the 22 inch wheels. Um, the massaging front seats. Uh, if you guys go for the Luxury Plus, you're gonna get the digital camera review mirror, the adaptive suspension, the panoramic glass roof, which has the ability to frost and defrost itself. My tester here, with all of the options that it has, Lexus offers a few a la carte options like the captain's chairs, the digital key function, the traffic jam assist, of course, uh, and of course, this color up charge for 500 bucks, all in with the destination charge. My tester comes in at 84,390. So just under 85 grand, certainly sounds expensive. You could get into a base Lexus LX for around $90,000, but I'd argue that the GX is probably the better value because they have similar amounts of interior space. This is only about three inches longer than the LX, and if you want an LX with the luxury package, you're spending well over $100,000. And also, if you're looking at a Defender, you're gonna have to compare it to like a Defender X, which starts at 90 grand. The Land Rover is gonna come in at around 100 grand. You can get, of course, into a Land Rover Defender for around 60, 56,000 bucks, but that's for a base version. And I suspect Lexus is definitely gonna give you more for your money. And of course, it's gonna give you that build quality and the reputation for reliability. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this brand new 2024 Lexus GX 550 Luxury Plus, if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.